This is the one show more. Hello, everybody, and you're listening to the Wrestling with Entertainment. Hey guys, this is Anna Diaz, and you're watching Wrestling with Entertainment. This is Zoe Saker, and you're listening to Wrestling with Entertainment. This is the American Sumo Mike Gamble, and when you're listening to Wrestling with Entertainment, it's just that easy. What's going on, Jackpad? It's your boy, The Vessler. Yes, that is, in fact, a vlogging wrestler. I also happen to be the best TikToker in all of independent, in all of professional wrestling, dare I say. Jack Tomlinson here, wrestling with entertainment. Super excited to be here. Super glad to be here. Hope you're ready for an awesome podcast. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show with Wrestling With Entertainment. Of course, audio experience on the web today, interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Wednesday on YouTube and CastBox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Player One Coffee. I am, of course, your host, James J., alongside Scooter Dust. Greetings, wrestling fans. I am in a New York state of mind today. And it's a great day for wrestling, because we are wrestling with... The Vessler, YouTube's favorite vlogger or vlogger, the Tom Holland of professional wrestling, the best TikToker in professional wrestling, the leader of the Jackpack, Long Island, born and bred, create a pro's own and VPW zone, and now Long Island University College graduate, Jack Oglinson! Wow. Wow. That is that is the greatest introduction I've ever received. Ryan Peterson, who does all the intros for Creative Bro, is going to be upset that I just said that. But thank you. Wow. Even okay, I, even you. I sometimes... <laughs> Trouble getting in all my uh, all my catchphrases. Leader of the Jack Pack, Vessler, TikTok, Tom Holland, professional wrestling. I have trouble getting all that in, but you you surpassed me, Scooter. That was awesome. hey, thank you. I am I am honored. Do you want to like host my vlogs from now on? Because that was a lot better than anything I could have ever done. Well, maybe do a soundbite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 awesome. yeah, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, Yo, I also, have to do that. send that to me. Okay. I'm gonna yeah, we'll, we'll, one part, and I'm just gonna run with that forever because that was fantastic. God, thank you. I am. If you can see me now, I'm blushing. There is no. a reason for that, though. I started as a ring announcer. I started really? as an announcer uh, for the NYWC. Oh no way! Okay, okay. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm, I've never had the pleasure of uh, wrestling for NYWC. It's on the list. I would love to get over there. But I owe, I owe so much to them because without NYWC, there's no Matt Cardona and there's no Brian Myers. And there's two of the biggest reasons I am a professional wrestler and why I'm able to do half of what I can do today. So I owe a lot to yeah. them if you really trace it back. Oh, oh I, absolutely. And we will we I will absolutely get into that. This is going to be a very, very fun interview, James. Of course. Uh, could you tell us uh, what you got coming up and your social medias and merchandise? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So as always, the Jackpack JT Vlogs merchandise is available at ProWrestlingTees.com backslash JT Vlogs. I sell other merchandise, other gimmicks, and all my independent wrestling shows like 8x10s. Getting some stickers soon, hopefully some wristbands as well. Super excited for those. Uh, any upcoming show that I'm going to be at, you can find all those, as well as the shirts. I would tell you all the shows that I have up and coming, but I don't remember them all off the top of my head. So what I have to say is find me on all social media accounts. On Instagram and TikTok, it is at Jack Tomlinson2000. On Twitter, it is at Jack Tomlinson double zero because they wouldn't allow for the extra two and the extra zero for me to make the Jack Tomlinson 2000 there as well. So sad, but that's what happens. And on YouTube, at Jack Tomlinson Vlogs. And of course, no need for to be looking for those uh, those websites. All of the links will be in the description of the video below, but on YouTube and Catbox. Well, thank you very much. Um, all right, let's get into it. You work for Creative Pro and VPW. Can you tell us about your relationship with those companies? Absolutely, absolutely. So Creative Pro Wrestling is where I start. It's where uh, it's my home in professional wrestling. It is. Where I first started training, the first independent wrestling show I ever watched as a fan was at Creative Pro Wrestling. I'm the youngest 
the youngest graduate in the history of creative pro wrestling. I am MJF's. He is better than you. He is the salt of the earth. I am his last match ever in the history of creative pro wrestling, which I also won. I'd like to plug that in there as well. I am also a former. I hate saying former. It used to be current, but now it's former. <sighs> Never mind. I am now a former creative pro tag team champion. My tag partner, Dante Drago, the other half of Vlogbro University. It's great, great, great time. Been there for almost all six years at this point, I had all my highs, all my lows there, and it's been fantastic. Still going on the on the rise there. I've been cheated by the Major Pod family on more than a couple occasions there, which is not okay. Which is why you have to remember it's hashtag Major Pod cheated. Most recently, I was actually assaulted. Yes, I was assaulted by Max Caster of the acclaimed, also of the Shook Group. He took his chain that he wears around his neck, he wrapped it around his fist, and he punched me in the middle of the face in the middle of that creative pro ring. It was very sad. It's okay. I have a nice diss, a nice freestyle diss dropping on him. Well, actually, at this point, it would have already dropped, so if you haven't heard it already or seen it, head over to my social medias, go check it out. And then uh, Victory Pro, Victory Pro Wrestling, it's right down the street from Korea Pro. It's another Long Island home promotion. I've been there for about four years now. Uh, we basically like to call it Creative Pro 2.0 because basically the entire roster is all Creative Pro guys, and it's, it's great. Right now, I'm in a, in a nice heated rivalry with Johnny Collins, the worst champion in the history of Victory Pro Wrestling history. And I say that because Johnny Collins is an entertainer and not a wrestler. And a lot of people get confused when I say that because, you know, what does that mean? Obviously, he's the champion of a wrestling company, so he has to be like a wrestler. Yes, I know, he's an actual wrestler. When the bell rings, he wrestles. But, but, he cheats in order to get all of his victories. And a wrestler with honor wouldn't cheat, so therefore, just an entertainer. I love that. Not- yes. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you. You might need to cut me off at times. I could talk. If we do this oh. for an hour, I could talk the whole hour to dude, myself. Dude, we had we've had interviews go for over three hours, so you're fine. Oh, <laughs> gosh, that's a who who is three hours? Kristen Robinson is with three hours. <laughs> Robinson, why does that name sound familiar? Oh. CZW's uh, uh, training camp, Limitless, up in Maine. Uh, I'm pro- I'm most likely leaving something out. What's the gimmick? He's the psychedelic psychonaut. Oh, okay. oh yes, yes, yes. I've heard this. All right, very nice. All right, probably had a lot of good stuff to say. And um, big congratulations on graduating uh, college. Yes, Con- congrats. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, anyone can't see it right now because we're only audio, but I have an LIU shirt on right now. So Long it's, Island uh, it's University. Uh, oh. Once again, uh, congratulations. Uh, I went to Queens College, uh, but uh, LIU, a, a great school. Uh, I, uh, this is so peculiar, and I mean that in the best way possible, All right. because I don't know anybody that really would have had the guts to do this. Two parts of a, actually three parts of a question. Tell us about your major. Okay. What re- what reaction did you get wearing the title belt <laughs> as you went across the stage? Okay. And would you say you got recognized for your wrestling on campus? Um. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Um. Major physical and health education. Um, I did my my last semester of college was spent student teaching. I had a fantastic time student teaching. I miss my students every day because they were the highlight of my college experience. Um, I really, really did love my time. Um, what was the reaction to wearing the belt? Honestly, people weren't really shocked about me wearing the belt because any most people that I graduated with had been there for four years with me at the school, so they knew me. They knew my personality. They knew me as the TikToker, the wrestler, the content creator kid on campus. So me wearing that belt wasn't that big of a shock, I don't think. Um, everyone in my major thought it was really cool. I was passing it around. Everyone was holding it. They were shocked at how heavy it actually was. So I, I don't know if that was like super, super shocking. People were honestly, at least students-wise, they weren't that shocked that I did it. Parents, on the other hand, were like, who, who is this kid? What is he doing? I felt bad for my fellow graduates because I felt a lot of parents – were a little too concerned about me and not concerned about their child who had just graduated, <laughs> which is sad. Wow. Um, the other thing that got a lot of attention, I wore a, a Spider-Man suit, and I don't mean like a cosplay suit, although I have one of those as well. 
I wore like a legit blazer in like a Spider-Man design, full on Spider-Man suit. This picture's on my Instagram. And that, that got a lot of attention. So many of my friends and people who didn't know me thought it was hysterical. I had like moms and grandparents coming up to me asking if they could take photos with me, which was so weird because I don't think they know wow. me as a wrestler. They just know me as the kid who wore a Spider-Man suit to their child's graduation, which is pretty funny to me. Um, that, oh there man, was, yeah. Yeah, there was actually, it's funny, when I first got to um, the, um, what, what would you call it, the, the fitness center where we all lined up for graduation because we graduated on the football field. Uh, when I first got there, there was a group of girls who were very clearly like, why is he wearing this? Like, they were they were honestly probably, like, poking a little bit of fun. They were being some haters, you know? They were hating on me. And my friend pointed it out, and he was, be, like, being a good friend. He's like, yo, Jack, listen, they're, they're, they're talking trash over there. And I was like, oh, okay. So I walk up to this group, and I go, hey, everyone, how's it going? Congratulations. And they literally look at me like, like, why is he over here? Because they knew that I just realized they were talking about me, they were talking bad about me, and they didn't want to face it. Because, you know, a lot of haters like to hide behind the little keypad, and that's totally, it's the world we live in. So I was like, I sent them my congratulations, and they were like, um, what do you want? And I go, oh, I just want to know if you want to take a picture with me. And they went, why? And I said, well, the joke will last longer if you have it on your phone. And they were like, very like, oh, shit, we got caught. Oh, am I allowed to curse Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they were very, I'll, I'll say shoot. This way I'm uh, PGing myself. They were like, oh, shoot. He just caught us in the act. And I felt bad afterwards walking away. I was like, oh, damn. I didn't have to I didn't have to put them on the spot like that. That was kind of mean. But, you know, it was it, it was funny. It was, it was a good memory. I would, um, it was quite funny. One of the girls walked up to me afterwards and said, hey, that, I'll be honest. That was kind of funny. Thank you for that. And I went, you're welcome. And she goes, yeah, I'm sorry about what we were saying. I go, I don't even know what you're saying. I don't care. I wouldn't have worn this suit if I wasn't ready for people to talk trash about me. And she like laughed and we walked our separate ways. Never again to meet. Um, the third, what was the third question that I'm getting at here? Uh, uh, would you say, would you say you were recognized more for your wrestling on campus? And I'll throw this in here as well, or for possibly being Tom Holland. <laughs> um, it, it honestly, it, it depended on the, on the year. Um, freshman year, I got recognized a lot as the TikTok guy. That was how I was known on campus and be like, oh, there's the kid who makes vlogs. Um, sophomore year, at least prior to, to COVID, especially the incoming freshman class, I was known as Tom Holland because I was an RA on my college campus. And every single freshman knew me as the Tom Holland RA, the Tom Holland looking RA. So I got recognized for Tom Holland sophomore year. Junior year, I, I, I kind of think people were just kind of used to me at this point. They were like, okay, like, we, we get it. He's he's famous on TikTok, quote unquote famous. What really qualifies as famous? Uh, he's a wrestler, but like they were used to it at this point. Senior year came around, and I think around senior year, I got recognized a couple times for AEW Dark. Um, oh, the one nice. time I did September. So that was. Uh, but yeah, by June, by the end of college, I was kind of just, especially my 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 spring semester and my senior year, I wasn't on campus. So I was student teaching. People were kind of just like, okay, Jack, Jack's here again. Like this guy. Because I was so heavily involved on my campus. As much as I made TikToks and I was wrestling, I was also an RA. I was a tour guide on my campus. I was involved in Greek life. I, I was friends with all the athletes. Like I, I was, I filmed on my campus. It wasn't like I stayed hidden in my dorm. Like I would film in the fitness center. I would film on the Great Lawn. I would film in the gym. Like I was all over the place. So like people knew me. People saw me. So like, after a while, you kind of just got used to me. I think. All right. Just want to mention this. Uh, I also. Uh, majored in uh, education. I am also, uh, I do have my teaching license from from uh, QC. Uh, childhood yeah. education, uh, grades one through five, and I will agree with you on the student teaching. Absolutely. One of the best experiences of my life, uh, nice. and I will absolutely never forget it. James. I actually have a follow-up to what you were uh, talking about. Uh, you know, you mentioned, you know, these girls talking crap about your suit. <laughs> and, you know, it takes a lot of guts to go walk up to somebody that's talking trash to you and have that kind of attitude, you know, a positive attitude, I mean. Where does that come from? Um, yeah, honestly, I've been, I've been very, very fortunate in that mindset for a very long time because I, I know a lot of people they, it's it's tough it's it's really tough to stand in the face of adversity especially when it's people uh that you don't necessarily know it's a lot harder to stand up for yourself 
when you don't know someone as opposed to standing up to yourself when you do know them, um, which makes no sense, but it's for some reason how a lot of us work. Um, I've always been very comfortable and confident in myself. Um, I think it's because as a young kid, I always looked up to people like, like Zack Ryder or like Jake and Logan Paul, who were people who very obviously stood out, did a lot of things to attract attention and did it so unapologetically themselves. So I think that after a while rubbed off on me. But I think I, I kind of, I like to hold myself this, to this little note that at the end of the day, when my head hits the pillow, the only person that's there with me is God. People that make jokes about me, people that don't like me, people that like comment and rude things on my TikToks, they're not there. They're not going to be there with me. So I need to be comfortable and at peace with myself before I can be at peace or comfortable with anybody else. Like I have to, um, you have, you have to, it's very cliche, but you have to love, love yourself first. And I really believe as long as you're not hurting anybody or you're not hurting yourself, go for it. If I walked into that group and was rude and started like being mean to them, then I wouldn't be okay with it. But I think I made light of the situation. I made a nice joke. And I think the fact that that other girl came up to me afterwards and said, hey, listen, that was, that was kind of funny and kind of cool that you did that. It kind of solidified that I was making light of the situation. And people, like, pe people see that. A lot of times when people talk bad about you, most of the time, honestly, almost all the time, when people are talking bad about you, it's not a reflection of who you are or even how they feel about you. It's just a reflection of like, some insecurities, some things they're facing in their life. I'll never judge anybody for that because... I'm no better than the next guy. I have my own insecurities. I got my own things I struggle with daily. And uh, I don't like being judged for it. So who am I to judge anybody else for theirs? I love that. That's awesome. Yes. Thank you. Um, there you go. Now, to get into a controversial subject, could you tell us about the match against Major Pod? Oh, <laughs> uh, the match against Major Pod. Which one are we talking here? Are we talking the about the, the one first? Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, Mark Smithmark. Yeah, so so listen, here here's the thing. Uh, a lot of people are confused about that match because the show prior, me and Dante, we jumped Matt Cardona. And people don't understand why I would do that. I mean, why would I do that? Matt Cardona is my childhood hero. And I did it very simply because I was tired of being looked at as the the child that created Pro. I was tired of being looked at as little Mark fanboy. I wanted to make my own name for myself. And what better way to do that than to stomp out the very man who made me that mark? And I did just that. It resulted in an awesome match. And, you know, as much as I was ready to go in there, beat him up, you know, do the right do uh, the right thing by Larger Than Life, which, of course, is myself, Dante, and Eric James, uh, I was excited. I was excited. Here's Brian Myers, the guy who trained me. Here's Smart Mark Sterling, my first ever match in professional wrestling. And here's Matt Cardona, the man who made me want to become – a professional wrestler, you know, here I am thinking we're going to have an honorable, good three-on-three, six-man tag match. And then what do they do? They invite Maven to the party. And Maven spears Eric James. Maven isn't even in the match. He spears Eric James, which just shows they needed to cheat in order to beat us. So that's just terrible, um, which started the trend that hashtag Major Pod cheated. And I'm so glad that the Jack Pack caught on to that and wasn't afraid to to speak up against Matt, Brian, and Mark and let them all know that Major Pod did in fact cheat. They, it needs to be known that they did cheat. So I'm really thankful to the Jack Pack and that's another showing of why the Jack Pack is the hottest and strongest family on the internet and in professional wrestling. Fast forward to Creative Pro the Grand Stage. Now it's Dante and I defending our titles against Mark and Swaggle. And, Brian, uh, and Dante made a point that Brian and Matt aren't in the match. So really, can they cheat again? And I was like, well, Dante, you got to realize, though. you got to remember, Mark was in that match, and Swaggle is in Major Pod. He's a part of that figure, figure four thing they got going on there. So you think they're not going to cheat? Oh, well, Dante tried to – Dante, I love Dante. He was super optimistic that we still had this. I knew that they were going to cheat, and I did not know they were going to cheat so quickly because literally before the match even started, Swaggle spit beer in our face. Then, as the match got underway, he punched me in a place where the sun don't shine, and he actually told the ref to close his eyes before he did it, and the ref willingly closed his eyes. So there's some bias there that I'm just pointing out, you know, which I'm not I'm not really okay with. Then they, they cheated us out of our titles, and it's just hashtag major pot cheated again. Who would think that could happen twice? Exactly. I mean, but, you know, a positive spin on the situation, you know, obviously well, they had full intentions of cheating going into both of those matches. So what does it kind of tell you that, you know, 
they felt so threatened by you and Dante that they had to go into a match knowing they were going to cheat. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think it's I think it's because people people are scared of uh, Dante and me because Dante and me have only been a team for a little bit over a year. And look at what we've done in that year. You know, everywhere we go, we take over, we dominate, create a pro tag team champions in less than a year of teaming together. We went to NFW. We were the NFW 2021 tag team of the year. People just realize that Dante and I are next up. You know, Dante and I are what's going to be known as creative wrestling in the next five years. You know, right now it's MJF, it's Chris Statlander, it's Max Caster. He assaulted me, by the way. It's Bear Bronson, you know, Smart Mark Sterling. But they know in the next – oh, VSK as well. I love VSK. But they know coming soon it's going to be Jack Tomlinson, Dante Drago, and a few other names I could throw in there. You know, Leo Sparrow, Dr. Cool, Jay Clang, you know, Mike Anthony. Those guys are all up there as well. But Dante and Jack, we're just – we're a level above. The students are overthrowing the master, so to speak. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Scooter, you have any follow-ups? Uh, yeah, especially with that uh, yeah, students upsetting the master. That was actually the idea that the NYWC wanted for me when I, went, uh, when I made the transition from announcer to wrestler. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. But now... You know, the pinned video on your YouTube channel is titled, Fuck You, Matt. Now, well, it's it's F and then a bunch of star signs. I, I, uh, I, technically, yes. It's a uh, PG. We're not PG. It's PG channel. What is it's on my channel. It's PG. And, of course, you know, Matt and uh, Brian there, NYWC uh, brethren. And you mentioned VPW being Creative Pro 2.0. <laughs> and I remember going to VPW shows a number of some odd years ago. Um, it just shows you how much everything has changed. But yeah, 10 years ago, you took a pick with Matt Cardona, with mm-hmm. Zack Ryder in yeah. 2012. So that, that has to mean something. Not to mention, I and correct me if I'm wrong here, 24 hours prior... He showed up on your podcast. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. Uh, the vlog at WrestlePro that I forgot about? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, it's, it's, it's weird. It's, wrestling is, is such a beautiful thing. It's, it's basically, it's, it's like with this one long love letter, and especially the story that Matt and I have going on, because, you know, this is, this is a 10-year-long storyline. No matter who he's, he's going up against, there is no person in the world, in the world, that will ever have the storyline that Matt and I have. I am without a doubt, 10 years ago, his biggest fan on the face of the planet. And today, I am without a doubt, his biggest rival, biggest threat on the face of the planet. And whether we meet again down the line, whether it's at Creative Pro, it's at GCW, it's at Impact Wrestling, it's it's NWA, wherever it is, wherever it is, we always will have that decade-long plus story that we have built in together. And it's crazy. And as far as him jumping in my vlog, you know, I was just trying to go out there and wrestle at WrestlePro, it was the day before um, uh, Creative Pro Intoxication, right before they cheated us. And, you know, I'm just trying to get into the zone. I was trying to go out there to win a Rumble. And he came in my vlog and was messing with my head, making fun of me for Wi-Fi, which I don't I don't get what he's getting at. You don't need Wi-Fi to film a vlog. You just need a camera. Like, you just hit record. You don't need Wi-Fi to do it. So he was messing with my head, and that's actually the reason I lost the Rumble. Matt was in my head. I'm man enough to admit it. I would have won if Matt kept his nose out of my vlog. Well... With without a doubt, and one thing talent really look for, although some may not admit it, is that endorsement or that stamp of approval that they look to get when they find themselves working with someone they idolized when they were younger. Would you say that this whole feud with Major Pod is? A, a symbolic passing of the torch. I don't want to. I use that term loosely because both still very active, still have a lot of years. Yeah. Uh, would you say that you know that's the stamp of approval, saying you know these pay attention to these guys? Yeah, uh, maybe definitely them cheating. You know, definitely having <laughs> definitely them cheating to beat us is definitely a uh, a stamp of oh these guys are a threat. So for sure, um, 
you know, I think it's honestly just uh, the next chapter in a very long book that Cardona and I are writing. It's going to be written for a very, very long time. And, you know, we did share the ring together. I did him with a pretty, pretty amazing radio silence. I think the greatest radio silence that's ever been hit. That being said, we haven't gone one on one and we got to go one on one, not only in a ring, we got to go one on one, like the biggest ring, the biggest stage we can get it on. So we got a long, long way to go before we get to that point together. Hi. Oh, absolutely. James. Now, uh, can you tell us about your tag partner in Wagro University, a university, Dante Drago, and what is a pet peeve you just don't understand about him? Uh, a pet peeve I don't understand about Dante? I love everything about Dante. I, 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 I will not allow anybody to drive a wedge through our team, James. We have a perfect team, a perfect unit. We are absolute perfection together. I think the only thing that could stop Dante and me is Dante and me. Point blank. Hmm. I, uh, I, love, I love Dante. Here's the frat star. I actually have his new wristbands, which are available at his merch tables. And they say the party is just getting started. He actually just opened up his Pro Wrestling Tea store uh, as well. So I want you to check that out, ProWrestlingTees.com. I believe it's slash, backslash Dante Drago. If it's not... Just go to Pro Wrestling Tees and look in the little search box for Dante. He's got a couple of pretty awesome shirts there. He's the frat star. You know, there's no other guy in professional wrestling that brings frat life, Greek life, into the ring like he does. And, you know, he's such a good guy. He's such a genuine, genuine good person. You know, he'll beat you up, but then he'll invite you to his after party. No one else is doing that. Only Dante is doing that. Good guy. Good man. And, you know, you guys have been... You haven't been tagging for that long, and... You know, so much chemistry. You've already became a 2021 Tag Team of the Year. Um, yes. You know, well, how do you? What do you attribute all of that chemistry and how you well you work together to? Mm-hmm. Uh, some people just click. You know, some people just click. We have a lot in common. He's like my brother. He's like one of my best friends in this entire world, inside and outside of wrestling. And, you know, I trust him. I trust him. He is he is smart. He is an underrated talent, both uh, psychologically and in the ring as an entertainer, as a wrestler, as a performer. He's so good. And it's so easy to to work together when you're part, when you're not pulling all the weight. You know, it's a, it's an even it's an even tag team. He does 50. I do 50. Sometimes he's got 60. I got 40. Sometimes I got 60. He's got 40. Probably him more so than me because, you know, he's he's just great. He's, it's uh, we're very, we're very, very spoiled. We're very, very spoiled. Uh, I want to just bring it around back to uh, the education. Now, Cool. I told us we had, uh, I told you before we got on the air that you and I had another connection. Now, if Mm. my name rings any bells in your head, then you probably know my nephew, Ryan. Sometimes Uh, it goes as Ryan Dust. It works for VPW. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I know Ryan. Ryan is in, it makes the best, the best 2K entrance videos. He's awesome. Great kid. That, well, that knocks off uh, another of my questions. Um, <laughs> since, he le- uh, since he lives and breathes VPW mm-hmm. and is also following uh, in my footsteps, as a podcaster, I would be remiss and I would be a terrible uncle and godfather if I couldn't uh, put in a request for him to be on your podcast in the future. I, my, my podcast. So I'm going to be 100 percent real with you. When you say podcast, do you mean vlog? Blog. blog yeah, I'm 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 an, I'm an old guy. We use podcast instead no, of vlog. You're good. You're good. I was like, look, do I have a podcast? I don't know about. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I believe, honestly, Ryan's been in a couple of my vlogs, honestly. And wow. I've made a few. Uh, I did this web series for a while called Beyond the Vlog, and I might bring it back at some point. And a lot of it was based off of the 2K stuff that he made, but absolutely, Ryan's got to be in these vlogs. Ryan is Ryan is always so helpful. He's so motivating, and he's such a, he's such a great, great character to have around. I honestly, the amount of stuff that I've had filmed at BPW, like, uh, like when I honestly, when I lost... I lost the Jack Tomlinson Vlogs YouTube Championship to Brandon Deckner. Uh, 
Ryan was holding the camera. When I beat Brandon before to win that title, Ryan was the ref. So Ryan is huge. Ryan's been a massive, intricate, uh, integral part of JT Vlog's history. So definitely, absolutely. That that is that that's that's my boy. He he certainly takes after his uncle. Now I like the connection. That's a cool cool uh, connection. I like that a lot. Thank you. And I'm this question I'm asking you as an uncle rather than an interviewer. He's dead set on being a wrestler. He want he wants to train with Creator Pro and sure. Pat Buck, who also trained me and and you know, Brian and all that. But he Oh god, I'm having trouble getting the words out. You can uh, we want his his parents, my sister and brother in law, and I have been trying to put the emphasis on going to college. And yeah, there was a compromise, I believe, in that okay, go to college and train mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So given the importance of that degree in graduation that how important it was to you to complete that for sure i have i have to ask and actually this is more of a humble request uh next time you see him can you please <laughs> emphasize to him the notion that education is so important and mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you know, kind of maybe skew it towards education. Fifty-one percent, forty-nine percent wrestling. I, I hear, I hear where you're coming from, definitely. Um, and like, I, I'll reiterate that the importance of education, definitely. Um, I, I really, I can't make comments because everyone's situation is different. And as much as people are heavily involved, people that are involved in the situation, no one's truly going to know it except for the person that's really feeling it. So I, I would speak based off if Ryan came to me, I would love to talk to him about it. I would speak based off of a lot of what he says, because um, where my head was at when I started college was very different than where I'm at now. And it was also very different than where my father was at, who played a similar position to what you're at right now. And I, I think that's so admirable and beautiful. And I love the family value of all of you sticking together, looking out for him. But it's, it's definitely possible to wrestle and go to school at the same time. I did it. And I, would, I not only did I do it, I won a championship during it. I'm not, try, not trying to brag, but I was I was successful in it. I wrestled for WWE. I wrestled for AEW. I found success while still being in school. So education is, is very important. Um, for me, this is strictly for me, what I found the most important wasn't only the degree and wasn't like the the, well, I'm blank, the diploma. It was it, it was the maturity, the, the maturing that I gained in four years. Like a lot of the times... It's just, I, I learned a lot being surrounded by people I knew that were my age that were going through a similar lifestyle as me. At the time, when I first started training at Creative Pro, I was, I was 15. And the next youngest person, I believe, was like MJF, who was 23 at the time, or 22. Like, there was no one around my age range. Everybody was so much older. So being in school, when I and being in college, I was around people that were my age, that experienced similar things to me, that were going through the same mental and emotional obstacles that you go through at that age, whether it's physical, emotional, whatever it is. Um, so that was very, that was very good. And there's a lot of memories that I, that I made that I wouldn't have made if I didn't go to college. And I kind of think I would have regretted if I didn't, you know, as much as I love wrestling, sometimes it was, it was nice to, to, to not go, not wrestle on a show, but instead be hanging out with some of my friends, you know, going to a party, making memories and just having a good time, listening to some good music. You know, I, I enjoy that. So, you know, it's, it's, but some, some kids don't want that. Some kids don't need the college memory, want to go straight to it. I mean, I, I call me crazy. I don't think. I think Matt Cardona only had two years, but I'm pretty sure Brian Myers did more than two years. Um, I know people, I know Daniel Bryan didn't even go to college. And then I know there are people who have like, like Britt Baker as it is like literally doctor degree, like DMV. So like DMV? it's, it's yeah. different based on the person. Um, but definitely I would love to, I'd love to speak to Ryan if Ryan wanted to chat about it. Next time I see awesome. It. Awesome. Thank you. And th there's a specific reason because 
I, I don't know if he's mentioned it or it, it's been heard in passing, but the kid is a varsity bowler. Really? He could, he, yes. He, I didn't know that. yeah, he, and, you know, and as much as, you know, he, he may not like it. He, he may, you know, grow disinterested with it and, uh, you know, lose, you know, passion for the, the skill and whatnot. But he could, we believe he could clearly go pro in a, in a sport that, you know, you That's don't crazy. Lose, I know you do. That. Awesome. Yeah, we just kind of, we, we want him to be able to, you know, you know, fly, you know, and uh, spread his wings. But again, I think it's the maturity that summed it up uh, so, so much better than I think I actually could in this interview. <laughs> I didn't Thank know he was a boy. That's pretty cool. I love that. Yeah, he might rag on me for uh, for telling that. Nah, bro. But, bowling's uh, sick. I'm not the best bowler, so if you're good at bowling, good for you. One of my, <laughs> my, one of my all-time favorite PE teachers, he was the bowling coach in high school. He was cool. Hmm. All right. Now, uh, can you tell us about your blog and how social media has become such a big part of, you know, independent wrestling? Yeah, Whew. social media has become such a big part of my life, uh, which is it's so weird to think about. Um, I bet a lot, a lot of people in my life wish it wasn't because I spend so much time on social media. And, you know, I, I do that because I see the good in it. I see there's a lot of great things to be had in social media, the connection, the, the, the community, the outreach, the, uh, the output that you can have if you're sending a positive, optimistic message out there. That's what I try and do. Even when I'm bragging like Major Pod cheated, I still try and send out a good Good message, uh, except for those haters. Can't can't stand those haters. They're they're just out there hating. Haters gonna hate. You know how it is. Um, but you know, uh, it's uh, social media. Social media. How, how do I how do I sum up social media today? I, I like to look at it. And I said this in my graduation blog. It is a journal or a diary to myself in thirty years. When I have kids one day, uh, I, my son and my daughter, although they will be heavily embarrassed at some of the cr cringy stuff that <laughs> mother did, they'll be able to look back and they'll they'll be able to see what what their dad what their dad was like. And there's so many so many questions I had for my parents growing up. They're like, I was like, you you did this, you went through this, you went through heartbreak, you went through this type of thing. Like I'm going through it now. Like I, it would be so much easier to go through if I knew if I knew how you felt, if I knew how you handled it. So maybe it'll help them. And if if it doesn't help them. Maybe it's helping somebody today. Um, my favorite part about, not, not only about wrestling, but it, my favorite part that's come with wrestling, but it's mainly come from social media because with social media, I have a much bigger outreach than I've had with anything else in my life. I get, I get messages, not often, but sometimes from people like just thanking me for, for what, what I do. And I'm just like, Hey, I'm just, I'm just making videos. I'm just having fun. And they, they'll like say, no, no, you're making a difference. You're like really helping me. And I'm like, wow, I, reading some of these messages it's like i put myself in their position and i say this is how i feel when i watch jake and logan paul make content like a lot of people don't like them a lot of people rag on them and there's plenty to rag on i get it but that's that's every person you could find something to rag on everybody about um but like i said earlier in this episode they're so unapologetic to themselves and they so always just follow the beat of their own drum and that was so inspiring to me and i honestly i wouldn't have a character in professional wrestling and i wouldn't have a vlog channel and this vlog channel is giving me confidence it's giving me speaking skills it's giving me uh, a better connection to the jack pack which not only is like fans and wrestling but it's just friends you know uh i wouldn't have had that so i put myself in jack pack members that say that to me about say that to me i put myself in their shoes and i'm like wow i can't believe someone thinks so highly of me it's humbling it's it's an honor and i'm very i'm very grateful for it it's really it's a cool 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 feeling um yeah, I don't know where I'd be without social media. Sometimes I wish I could. Uh, uh, sometimes I wish I could take a step, take a step back from it, and just look at it from the outside. But I'm so deep in it, I kind of don't want to. I definitely get that, but it seems like you know the vlog and social media has really helped your wrestling career, and not a lot of you know wrestlers today quite know how to take advantage of you know this this outlet 
that. You can understand what I mean. It's tough. It's very, very tough. Um, you know, it's 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 forever changing. It's always different. Every every platform is different. What people want on Twitter is not what they want on TikTok. You know, I'll post a TikTok and it'll get a hundred thousand views, and I'll post the exact same TikTok on on Twitter and it will get a hundred views. Like it's just it's very things are different. You got to learn how to navigate each and every single site, each and every app, and each and every single media platform differently, which is it's challenging. It's tough. But you know, it's it's all right there at your disposal. You gotta, you you just gotta put in the work. There is no barriers to entry with being successful on social media, which is the difference between wrestling and acting. Two things that I'm also working on and trying to get into. There's a lot of barriers to entry for those. Okay. There is none in social media. There is absolutely none. The only barrier to entry is yourself. You just need to go for it. And you know, the only obstacle that I've run into is people will go, "Oh, Jack, you post too much." But then I like. I watch like people like uh, Gary V, and if anyone knows who Gary V is, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, businessman, entrepreneur, public speaker, really, really uh, wise guy, very inspirational. He's always talking about, dude, if you got TikTok, you got to be posting like four, four times a day. Because you know what? One of them's going to catch on. They don't all need to catch on. Just one of them needs to post as much as you can. And not that you should get rid of quality. I believe all my content has good quality. Um, but I've kind of adapted a motto. Sometimes quantity over quality. A lot of people try and do quality over quantity. Sometimes quantity over quality, and it's it's working pretty well for me. All right. That's good. You have the question. Now, you have something that a lot of independent talent don't get the chance to have. Tell us about your trading card. Oh, my trading card? Oh, I wish uh, there was a... Um, I wish there was visual because it's actually hanging up right here. So uh, Brian Myers obviously owns Creative for Wrestling, but he also has a promotion with Matt Cardona called FWF, which is based off the Figure Wrestling Federation that they started on their podcast, Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. Um, and they turned it into a real-life promotion. It started out with two shows that were just streamed because it was during the pandemic. And this past week, we had our first ever live one with the crowd, FWF Live 3. And I came out with, so actually, let me, let me backtrack really quick. At the end of every show, uh, Major Pod, they make cards for everyone, which is really, really cool. And I got my rookie card, which is me with Eric James, because we teamed together at FWF Live 2. We also teamed together at FWF Live 3. So I came out in my entrance at Live 3, wearing the card around my neck. And I made a joke, because Logan Paul's WrestleMania year looked very, very similar to mine. Yeah. my gear that I wore in AEW, I made a joke saying, oh, thanks, Logan, for letting me inspire your gear. So I thought it was only fitting for basically my WrestleMania weekend that my entrance gear is inspired by his entrance gear. So I wore the card around my neck. I honestly, I really, really like it. I think it's cool. I think it's different. I think it stands out. So I honestly think I'm going to keep wearing this card around my neck every show. I think so. I have to. Someone said to me I shouldn't wear the lanyard because it makes me look like I'm a lifeguard. Um, but the, <laughs> yeah, the lanyard says Long Island University, which I wore because I just graduated that week. So it was like a little tip of the, tip of the cap to my alma mater now, which is so weird to think about. But I kind of like it. I think it's more me. My brand wouldn't be wearing a thousand dollar chain. Like that's not something I would do. I'm not a very monetary type person. Right. But uh, but I would wear a lanyard because I think lanyards are cool. You know, if you ever see me, I always got lanyards. They're awesome. So I think I would. I definitely got to keep doing this. I think it had charm to it too. I think the cheaper, the more charming. <laughs> I, lo I, lo I love that. I absolutely do. Thank you. I'm just looking at the card now, right now. Actually, pretty it's cool. a pretty cool card. For sure. It's, it's yeah. Awesome. I mean, it's awesome. I have the whole. I have the whole deck again. Y'all can't see it, but I have the whole FWF um, Live Two deck of cards right in my hand. Forty-five. Now, uh, you wrestled MSP, who are big names on the independent. Can you yes. tell us about how that came about and what was that experience like? So that yeah, so that was at NFW, um, Northern Federation Wrestling, where Dante and I have been wrestling. Dude, I have such a great history with NFW. NFW before we had our their first show, they did. Um, little uh, spotlight matches for different companies like Excite Wrestling. And I was in the first ever NFW match. It was a fatal four-way. It was the main event 
of NFW Breakout, which was the YouTube show they were doing during the pandemic. So I was in the first ever main event, first ever match for NFW. And then on the first ever show for NFW was uh, NFW Coming In Hot, I believe it was called. And the opening match to that show was me and Dante teaming up against the Golden Era. So not only was I the first ever match for NFW history ever, Dante and I were the first ever match at a live show ever together. And, you know, Dante and I have been on a bit of a win streak, which has been great. We've been rising through the rankings. In 2021, we won the NFW Tag Team of the Year. And, you know, we started saying that VBU is NFW. And the reason we were so confident to say that is because we beat MSP. You know, we, we beat other teams. We wrestled other teams. And, like, cheers to all them. They're all great. Like, the Golden Era, great guys, good talents, nice, bright futures ahead for them. But, you know, MSP was, like, on a different, different level than any other team we faced at NFW. They were they were the cream of the crop. They were the top of the top. And the way we were able to topple them, you know, Dante pulling out his, his 619, me pulling out the subscriber stomp. First time I ever hit the subscriber stomp in an NFW ring, and it was to beat MSP. And, you know, nothing, nothing but respect for them. They were they were incredible. Some of the best opponents we've ever, ever had. The first five minutes of the match were basically dancing the whole time together. If anyone watched that match, it's, it is amazing. I love that match. I love those wrestlers. That was I would I would do that any day of the week with them. Oh, well, Scooter, you have a question. Yes, tell us about the Jackpack Hater Girl. Jackpack Hater Girl, you got to help me out on that one. Uh, there's a picture of a young fan giving you the finger on Instagram. You compared it to. Uh, Sad Miz girl. Oh my gosh! Yes, uh, I honestly don't know where that where that came from. You know, um, I guess sometimes when you when you perform your art so well, I'll humbly say, it invokes real emotions out of people, and that's some of the most real emotion I ever got. I had I was just vlogging at my merch table. I had a cool little moment where this fan took me off, which was not too nice, but it's okay. I, it was humbling as an entertainer that that happened. And I don't know why I, I was looking, I was editing that vlog. And as I'm editing it, I'm thinking, gosh, this reminds me so much of the, the little Miz girl. So I just, <laughs> I, posted, I posted, I didn't think it would gain any traction, but for about a good week, I was getting a lot of comments, a lot of DMs about that and saying, oh, this is, this is so funny. Or some people, a lot of Jackpack members were angry. Like, how would you do this to the leader of the Jackpack? Like, I was just like, guys, like, it's okay. You know, haters going to hate. You know, all the haters are going to hate. And as much as I don't like the haters, I respect where they come from. I respect where they come from. Not a fan of them. Haters are not for me. There's only one hater I like in this world, and her name is Jamie. Uh, so everyone else, don't like her. Who is this hater you like? Jamie Hater. Oh. <laughs> okay. Her name is oh, Jamie. I love it. I, I love the wordplay. Up. Okay, I completely yeah. looked up for that. <laughs> okay, I get only, that. only the only hater that I like in this world. She is fantastic, phenomenal, phenomenal wrestler. Great hater. Great hater, absolutely. Um, what, what did it mean to you to wrestle in the Nissan Coliseum? Oh, wrestle at the Coliseum. Oh my gosh. Because that... one of those unappreciated, but very, you know. Big wrestling historical buildings. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I, I said this. I said this a few minutes ago. Uh, not a few minutes ago. Probably twenty minutes ago. At this point, uh, wrestling is a love letter. And my first, my dream as a kid growing up was to be a WWE superstar, which was to wrestle for WWE. And I, at eighteen years old, I wrestled on Monday Night Raw, which is the first time I ever watched wrestling. Was watching Monday Night Raw, the first show I ever saw live of any any company. Was Monday Night Raw. It was at the Nassau Coliseum, and to have my first ever match with WWE be at the Nassau Coliseum, and to team with VSK, who was probably the most important part in training me when I was becoming a wrestler when I was first starting out, is it's it's a love letter. It's it couldn't be scripted any better. Like you can't write this stuff. They, I remember there's a moment uh, I had just gotten my rear end handed to me by the Viking Raiders. And I'm laying in the corner, and I'm looking over at the time buckle, and I see the WWE logo, and then I kind of look around the entire Coliseum before, you know, before Ivar kind of sits on my face. Um, I'm looking around, and I'm seeing all the people, and I'm like, there are 10,000, 10,000 Jackpack members here. 
and I am wrestling in my home arena, my hometown at 18 years old. I was so not, not ready for it, but at the same time, I couldn't have been more ready for it, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. It's kind of, like you said, it's a love letter. It kind of mm. seems like it was a full circle moment, so to speak. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. That's awesome. And to do it at such a young age as well, was did you mm. have a moment to, you know, soak it all in? I, I did, and I can thank VSK for that. So, like, when I found out it was happening and then we started warming up, you know, we got in the gear and we like, we're, we're stretching. And right before we go to gorilla, Vinny stops me. VSK. He stops me and he goes, and he can tell I'm like jittery. I'm amped up. I don't want to mess this up. And he goes, Hey, can you go out there? Take it in. And I go, yes, absolutely. And he goes, no, no, no. Look at me. And he kind of, I get the feeling he's like, not just saying a passing comment. Out. He goes, look at me. He goes, and Vinny was at, and VSK was actually the reason I was at extra work that day. He is the one who asked me if I could come. Um, he looks at me and goes, I'm being serious right now. There are some people who wrestle 20 years and never get even close to where you're at right now. You're not even 20 years old and you're going to be in that ring. You're doing something that most people never even dream of. And then he goes, and I wouldn't have picked you if you didn't, if you weren't ready for it. I'll be right there. You no, know, just take it in. Enjoy this moment. And I, I remember stopping and going, holy, holy cow, like, this is, this is real. And there's, there's no other person in the world, literally no one else in the world I would have rather had that match with other than BSK. And that's how I took it in because of him. That's awesome. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Scooter, you have a question. Yes. Us about the Funko Pop title belt. Yes, that was the uh, Jack Tomlinson Vlogs YouTube Championship. That was the one that I beat Brandon for that Ryan got was the ref for. Ah, okay. Short and simple. Yes. I like it. Um, but you were kind of coerced into putting the uh, not 24-7, uh, 24-6 rule into play again. Correct? Yeah, so the original the original name of the um, of the title was the twenty three six Papa the Dank YouTube Championship, and it basically the rule is you could defend it twenty three hours of a day, six days a week, just not on Sunday because we know we rest on Sunday. Right. And I won it, and when I won it, I was like, "That's a stupid rule." I'm a true champion. Why would I ever run the risk of losing it at any moment? Because I'm a bit more preoccupied with something else, you know. So I got rid of that rule, and then when I ran into Papa Dank, he came to me, and Papa Dank is like, "Was was was." Like fathered me in wrestling, and he was like, "Hey, Jack, I made that rule. Could you bring it back for me?" And I said, "Okay, because you're a good dad. I got you. I'll do that for you." And I did it for him. Little did I know, he was doing it to trick me into giving Brandon enough time to sneak up from behind, come out of nowhere, roll me up, and pin me, and take back the title. And I was mad at Brandon at first, but then, then it hit me. I taught Brandon well. I taught him so well that he knew to to distract me. You know, good, good for him. Good for him. Good for him. Good for both of them. So now the 23-6 rule is back. I believe Brandon lost it to a balloon maker, uh, Mr. Pop and Twist. So clearly not as good of a champion as me. I'm the longest reigning, whatever you want to call it, whether it's the Jack Johnson Vlogs YouTube Championship or it's the Papa Dank YouTube Championship or it's the 23-6 Championship, whatever the heck we're calling it. I am the longest reigning champion ever, the best champion ever. And I don't care what anyone says, no one produced more content with that title than I did, which does go for something in my book. Views count for something in my book. Uh, and just to follow up on that, uh, what day does the 23-6 uh, uh, belt not apply to? What day of the week? Sunday. We rest on Sunday. Yeah, great. Awesome. Love it. Okay. Uh, now, uh, can you tell us about your time with Chaotic Wrestling? How did that come about, and what was that experience like? Yeah, chaotic wrestling was right at the start of the pandemic. I was looking for some good. Uh, I was looking for some wrestling. I was trying to get back to the room. New York was still not fully back in the in the spring of things, and I wanted to get out there. And I don't. I don't remember who. I don't remember who reached out. Oh, I think I. I, I spoke to to another wrestler, and I said, "I yeah, I really, really need some work. I need to get some reps, and I need to come back." Um, and they, I guess, they talked to the promoter because a day later, the promoter reached out to me, invited me up. 
did a few episodes chaotic reloaded got to wrestle ricky archer which was a dream match it was great uh i had a blast you know he ended up becoming a good friend of mine um i miss ricky every day he just he just graduated as well so happy graduation ricky ricky yeah. smokes guy what a guy uh you know and then i had one of the best matches of my entire career against aaron Rourke, and i just i'm very thankful for my time at chaotic wrestling they had a great locker room a lot of great people there you know can't wait to get back up there hopefully really soon maybe next time i'm up there uh dante will be with me and we'll we'll be taking on some other people maybe i believe the current chaotic tag champs are in the unit one half is danny miles and i wrestled danny miles um at chaotic wrestling you know man, man's tough man is tough but fun match oh yeah I think uh, MSP was a uh, chaotic champion last time I checked. And I mean, oh, they're, they're the new champions? I believe, I know, I think they're the, I know they're, I want to say they're Blitzkrieg or the Limitless tag champs. I'm not sure where they are right now, but. They have belts on them. <laughs> yeah, they got, they got, they got gold. They got gold for days. And I mean, you got, and you got a win on them. So, I mean, you know, that's a good reason to challenge. Yeah, we got the W's. Yeah. Uh, Scooter, you have a question. Now, somebody, uh, two people you've had uh, in numerous interactions with throughout your career are John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Yes. Uh, but, uh, uh, they were there when I started in the NYWC, uh, and Silver being my height and much less hungry at the time. Uh, <laughs> was my the ideal training partner and alex was a guy who wanted to be more than you know just an extra or enhancement that was you know jobbing to advance archer on ecw and mm -hmm. i bragged on him a little bit for that I, also, mm -hmm. I have a road trip story from alex but that's for a completely different time uh and alex and john were uh, two of the few that when other people said i was terrible that i couldn't back bump they were the ones who saw that i had potential with time mm -hmm. uh and that 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 meant so much to me tell us about your experiences with uh, alex reynolds and johnny hungy yeah definitely um two two of the best two of the most underrated wrestlers on the planet i i've said this for years now and i will i will hold this up to anyone alex reynolds might have the best mind i've ever had the pleasure of working with in wrestling you know, uh, this was back in 20, I think 2019, 2019, um, it was back in 2019, right after I wrestled on Raw 205 Live and I beat MJF, I, uh, I started to, um, try and pick up some, 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 uh, traction, some steam at Creative Pro, and I knew it was getting a lot, so I needed to reach out to someone who helped train me and help build me, which was Mr. Reynolds, uh, so I reached out to him and he basically left my DM on red. And basically, he let, he let me go into this match alone. At mid-match, and he comes out with my vlog camera, and he's vlogging, and he distracts me, and I get rolled up, and I lose the match. Uh -huh. It sucks. Uh, but essentially, after that point, he wasn't impressed with me. He's like, see, this is why I don't want to help you, kid, because you couldn't win the match. You embarrassed yourself. So it ended up me and him going to blows, having a match together. You know, he ended up uh, kicking me in a place with the sun don't shine. I challenged him to a no-disqualification match. The day it was supposed to happen, he didn't show up. John, John, John Silver shows up. So him and I have one of the best matches I've ever had. He really pushed me in my limit. He really threw me around like a rag doll, but I, I kept fighting. I got all that heart in wrestling and I beat him. And then that led to me finally having that no DQ match with Reynolds. And we went at it. We brawled, uh, took a few kendo stick, took a, I believe I took a chair. I believe I hit, I believe I hit even destroyed him onto a chair. And then it was during, uh, Christmas. So Santa Claus came out. Uh, he decided to hit Santa Claus with a birthday present to the face, and I decided to powerbomb him through those presents. And, and beat him. Yeah, yeah. Beat up, he beat up on Santa Claus, crazy. Yeah, that's a heel move. I mean, I guess Hanukkah fans. Uh, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, now, I and just to give you maybe a little bit of ammunition back towards Alex, should the day ever come, I don't know if Alex ever told you what uh, his primary gimmick in the NYWC was. Um, he was a blue-blooded snob from the Hamptons. Huh. And he came out to, uh, oh, what's his name, T 
Time to say goodbye. Hmm. Uh, I, I can't remember his name now. It's listening, it's but Daniel. yeah. And if he if he ever you know, gives you, you, you crap, just remind him of that, and you got him. You, you'll have an edge on him. Hey, I, I him and I wrestled twice, and I beat him both times. That's the edge I need. That's the edge I got. Well, shit. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keeping on that on this topic, um, maybe I read way too much into this. Can you tell us the story behind Mr. Reynolds? Mr. Reynolds, you know, he was, he was, uh, he trained me. You know, he helped, he helped build me in this industry. Of course, Brian and Pat, who own Creative Pro, were big in training me. But when I first started, it was really BSK. And, and Reynolds, and it didn't seem fitting because he was someone I looked up to. It didn't seem fitting to call him Alex, you know, until he decided to to, to betray me. And then it was no longer Mr. Reynolds, it was Alex. He was someone I, you know, you respect your elders. In school, you don't call your teacher by the first name. You call them by Mr. or Mrs. Insert their last name. So he was Mr. Reynolds to me. And at the same time, that was when uh, Spider-Man Homecoming had was uh, having some heat. And, you know, you ever notice? Peter doesn't call him Tony. He calls him Mr. Stark. Yeah. And it's a, respect yeah. thing. it's a respect thing that Tom Holland and Tom Holland Professional Wrestling have for our, our trainees, the people who we have for us. All right. On the subject of movies, can you tell us about the movie remakes you did? The movie remake. Oh, my gosh. I haven't thought about those in flipping forever. Oh, my God. What did I even do in those movie remakes? You did um, uh, a Breakfast Club one, um, um, the Tom Cruise dance from a risky, risky Business, um, you did uh, Home Alone, and you did one more. I can't remember. Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller, yes. Yes. Uh, I think that was just, I'm a huge movie fan. I'm a big movie buff, and I just, I really like those movies, and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make those. That's really, there's no, that was it. Interesting. And yeah, I love them. Those are so much fun. So much fun. Are you a big uh, Breakfast Club fan? Huge Breakfast Club fan. I have a Breakfast Club poster up in my room. Look at any one of my TikToks. Yes. There is always a Breakfast Club and Spider-Man poster in the background. Can you tell us about your love for the Breakfast Club? Uh, it's basically just a love for movies. I just love movies. In my opinion, the 80s were the best time for movies ever. Um, and The Breakfast Club is like the pinnacle of that for me. So, uh, And I'm just going to follow up on that because three of the movies you mentioned are John Hughes movies. Would you say John Hughes movies stand out to you more than other movies of the 80s? I mean, I guess... If I really thought about, it, probably just based on my taste, but not intentionally. All right, all right, um, all right. This is something. This is something I have to ask, and wrestling cannot factor into this answer. Okay. How many times have complete strangers thought that you were actually Tom Holland? Actually thought I was Tom Holland. I don't know if anyone's actually thought I was Tom Holland. I've, had, I've definitely had numerous, like too many to count. People say I look like Tom Holland. I don't know if anyone actually ever thought I was Tom Holland. Uh, there was a little kid one time. I actually came out of seeing Far From Home. He he was like, "Mom, it's Spider Man." He pointed at me. Oh. So that kid, that kid might have thought I was Spider Man, but oh, yeah, that that that, that warms my heart. Um, yeah, it was, it was very sweet. It was very sweet. Yeah. The mom, yeah. I'm so sorry. And I was like, no, don't be sorry. It's so cute. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to suggest, you know, you probably could have a side hustle in Times Square, you know, charging, you know, five bucks a, a picture. Maybe, maybe. Now, uh, <laughs> were you a part of the Black Sword Security Guard against Rollo, Rollo lawsuit that Smart Mark Stoli started? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, all I will say is this. I I will do anything to defend a fellow creative graduate in MJF. And I went out there to protect 
and and honestly to protect Wardlow to protect Wardlow from from hurting himself. Right. Um, you know, he threw he threw a table in my face, so I won't say anything about my lawyer. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Let's get into a controversial subject: pineapple on pizza. What's your stance? Uh, it belongs. Pineapple on pizza is amazing. Anyone who says otherwise is a hater. Not Jamie Hater, though. Not Jamie Hater. No, no. We love. Well, if Jamie Hater doesn't like pineapple on her pizza, then that's okay. She doesn't have to eat pineapple on her pizza. But, like, I like pineapple on my pizza. What's your spirit Pokemon? My, my what? What's your spirit Pokemon? Pokemon? I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no clue. I mean, <laughs> Pikachu? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we love the OG down here. Maybe Pichu? I don't know. I don't. I never. I never was that big into Pokemon, honestly. Weirdest question you'll ever be asked on a wrestling podcast: Would okay. you ever consider wrestling a rap? Not playing Jansen, Scooter. Not wrestling. a country. And wrestling a rock. A rock. A a rock like Dwayne Johnson? No. An actual <laughs> physical rock. Like an inanimate rock? Yes. Wow. What circumstance would I ever have to wrestle a rock? Well, he's the world champion. The rock is the world champion? Yes. And we're not talking about Dwayne Johnson? No. Or the country? Um, no. No, I wouldn't wrestle a rock. What? No, I, I don't think I would. Well, for context, there was this wrestler named Psycho Mike that wrestled an actual rock for over 15 minutes in an Iron Man match that lasted for two weeks. Did he win? No. Yeah. The rock won. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I can't say I've ever heard that one. That one's different. Yes. No, nah, I would I would not wrestle a rock. I would wrestle the rock, Dwayne Johnson, but I would not wrestle a rock. Fair enough. And also we love Tracy Smothers. Do you know the acronym for Doug? T H U G. Can't say I do no. <clears throat> T is for terrible. H is for hell. U is for ugly, and G is for jail, because a thug can't spell. Hmm. Is that like a, that's a wrestler's thing, or is this like a mainstream pop culture thing? No, it's Jesse Smothers, a, a very, um, beloved pro wrestler. That's unfortunately no longer. Yeah. Oh, they passed? Yes. You oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Tracy, Tracy, Tracy Smothers, uh, very well known in the you know, uh, er, you know, early days, had a number of uh, feuds with, uh, you know, you, you probably would remember him the most as part of the FBI in ECW. Oh, okay, yes, yes, oh, yes. Um, sorry, I was very, I was, I was a little uh, confused for a second myself. No worries. Yes, that's a, uh, that's that. Scooter, any last questions? Well, no. Don't forget the Burger well, King question. I'm gonna Burger King your face. Alright, before Dairy Queen, BP. Okay, this is, this is going to be a very ridiculous question. Probably the most ridiculous question you'll be asked until a, a few minutes from now. Uh, well, like you said, it's the it's the last one, so you gotta get it in there. It's gotta be gotta be. Well, a good what, what, well it's it's. The last before we go into our closing segment. Uh, okay, okay. Since, since I have a personal history in Hicksville. Uh, Create a Pro is based out of Hicksville. Correct. Uh, are you familiar with a camp called Carousel Day Camp at all? Never heard of it. Sorry. Okay, we can skip that. <laughs> What's this last What's this uh, last segment? I'm excited. Well, we have a 
maybe a, a few more things to go on. Uh, we got the colossal question up next. Did All right, let's do it. They decided to make a movie about you. What would be the first three songs on the Jack Tomlinson movie soundtrack up to this point in your career? First three songs. At some point, Gone, Gone, Gone by Philip Phillips would have to be in there. I think that would be the closing song with the credits. That's my all-time favorite song. Uh, I really like Good Vibrations, so I think it would have to be like a workout montage or like a wrestling montage to that by Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. And then I think um, uh, right before the pandemic and during the pandemic, I took a step away from wrestling and social media. Um, and I guess when we get into that emotional part, probably play like like Sand in My Boots by Morgan Wallen, like some sad song that really would tug on the heartstrings. Hmm. Interesting. You have three solid picks there. Do you lock them in? Thank you. Do you lock those three songs in? Sure. All right, you all locked in. Now, it is once again time for that segment. Jack Tomlinson's Bizarre Adventure. You're a wrestler that goes up and down the road and weird, crazy, and bizarre things are found to happen. Can you tell us a road story that fits that description? You're crazy and bizarre. I'll be honest, I got a pretty I got a pretty boring road 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 history. I've never had anything that's ever happened to me on the road is on the vlog somewhere. Um I'm going to disappoint with that one. I don't have a crazy story. I don't. All right. I don't know. Yeah, sorry. No. I a crazy story for you on that one. <laughs> no voice. I think that's actually, in some degrees, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of, you know, keep it, keep it plain. Just keep it, keep it correct in the logs. All right. Um, what do you see yourself in five years? Five years? Whoo! Got a lot of big goals, a lot of big goals. Uh, I break my goals down based on each individual car- uh, category. So definitely in social media, I want to in five years, I want to hit that one million subscribers on YouTube. That's definitely massive, massive goal. But I would love to achieve it um, at least a hundred k. Wrestling, you know, I love to have the opportunity to be signed and to be wrestling on TV underneath. That'd be great. It'd be so awesome to have that opportunity to have that outreach and do it alongside Dante, maybe, which would be really cool. Um, acting, I hope to get some roles going. My dream is to be in a teen drama TV show. Or to be in a uh, nice little romance movie like a Nicholas Sparks film, so Ooh. definitely, definitely those. Ooh. And what is a match people should go out of their way to see that best shows off what Jack Tomlinson is all about? Me? Whew. What best shows what Jack Tomlinson is all about? That's a that's a tough one. I would say probably watching me wrestle in JF. Or you can watch me wrestle Silver, Reynolds, any of the conference ones we've talked about already. But if you want to see BBU, which is my current tag team, I would say definitely watch us wrestle the Even Stevens or watch us wrestle Made Your Pod. Hi. Well, I know uh, I know for sure the MJF match is on YouTube. It's actually on your page. Yeah, all my all all these matches are on my YouTube channel, Jack Tomlinson Vlogs. You gotta go check those out. They're in playlists. The, and your YouTube channel will be in the description of the video below, both on YouTube and Chatsbox. So everybody can go check out all those matches after uh, this interview if they haven't already. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for that plug. Absolutely. All right. Since we are nearing the conclusion of this interview, we are wrestling with the eight questions of Doom. Dun, dun, dun. Any questions of doom? Yes. No oh, actual just... doom. No actual doom to be incurred. That does not sound good. That sounds scary. Was that Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks? No, it's the slot from the Croods. The Croods. Oh, okay, okay. This is our speed round, our bonus round, the round where we see who you really are. Are you ready? I guess so. 
Excluding yourself, greatest wrestler of all time. Greatest wrestler of all time? Yes. Greatest? Yeah. Uh, Seth Rollins. Worst wrestler. Uh, worst wrestler. I use anyone, any hater. But not Jamie specifically. Not Jamie hater. Not Jamie hater. Yes. No, she's. I'm. I'm changing my answer. She's the greatest wrestler of all time. All right. Love for Jamie hater. What about Bill hater? Hater. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't know who Bill hater is off the top of my head. Bill hater. Is that, isn't that an actor? Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is. Is. SNL, Barry. Oh, yeah. No, no. No, no. That, he's cool. I like him. Your main event in WrestleMania for the World Championship. Who is your opponent? Matt Cardone. If you could come out to anyone's entrance music, past or present, who would it be? Stone Cold. I'd love to hear. I'd love to walk out while I hear people pop to that glass breaking. Yeah. Yeah, actually, not the first person to not only give us that answer, but give us that same exact reason. Oh, well, then I got to change it. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't. John, you love it. John Cena. I want to come out in here. Burn, burn, burn. All right. Oh. Uh. Finish the sentence. K Babe is You say K Fabe? K Fabe, yes. Uh alive and what? We also would have accepted is quite good on toast. K Fabe? Yes. Yes. Uh, are we thinking of two different things? What does that mean good on toast? It, it, it's it's just a it, it's it's a throwaway joke. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> it's okay. It's absolutely <laughs> fine. Rapid fire, and I'm overthinking every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. These are it's pretty good. Okay. Squash, fruit or vegetable? Vegetable. It is a fruit. Yeah, you're... Oh. <laughs> oh, you're a college grad, man. Come on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> It's a fruit. You uh, but you're you're in good graces with Coleco Yachts now. Uh, a part of Squash Squad and that means a hell of a lot more. Cool. He's our third. Nice. Thank you. New Japan wrestler Tai Chi. His ring joke gets smaller every year, revealing more of himself to the world. My question, what is the appropriate trumps the buck cheek ratio for ring gear? I wear tights, man. I got no opinion on trunks. I wear tights. Okay. And the last question, the main event, the thing everybody wants to know. Have you ever had a conversation with a stranger in a supermarket about Darby Allen? No. And that is the correct answer. And then, that will conclude this interview. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this with us, Jack. Yes. Thanks for having me. Had a blast. It was a lot of fun. Once again, uh, could you tell us where we can find you on social media, your merchandise, everything we need to know about Jack? Yeah, absolutely. MerchandiseProWrestlingTees.com backslash JT Vlog. Social media at Jack Tomlinson2000 on Instagram and TikTok. At Jack Tomlinson double zero on Twitter and at Jack Tomlinson blogs on YouTube. And of course, you don't need to throw that into your Google machines. All of those links will be in the description of the video below, but on YouTube and Castbox. Simply click the link and you will be there. You've been listening to him for just under an hour and a half. By a damn short. <laughs> Thanks, mate. And of course, join the Jack Pack. I mean, Jack, are we officially members of the Jack Pack? Oh, you are definitely in. Yes! Yes!
Absolutely. This is this is the first club where my nephew was actually a member before I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ryan's the back back. Well, we were not Squatsy Squad first, so there's that. Oh, you guys had Becca on here? On here? We had Becca on here when she was yes. still basic Becca. I love Becca. Becca is amazing. She is, in my opinion, the future of women's wrestling. I could sit here and talk for another hour about how much I love Becca. She is great. We could probably talk about, uh, we could probably talk about <laughs> Becca as well. She's awesome. <laughs> She, she, she's a superstar. She's an absolute icon. Love oh, you, Becca. Absolutely. If you're listening to this, I love you. <laughs> you better put this and tag her in that part so she knows I love her. You better help me out with that one. I oh, will, absolutely. I will, I will make a sound bite and I will tag her in it for sure. Cool. Hi, Becca. If you're hearing this, it's Jack of the Jack Pack. Also, formerly a member of the Scrunchy Squad. Well, no, still in the Scrunchy Squad. Is Scrunchy Squad still a thing? Let me know, Becca. Yeah, there you go. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment on our YouTube and chat box. Of course, this was sponsored by Rogue Energy and Cleo on Coffee. Join us next week for another incredible interview. Uh, to follow uh, follow uh, Wrestling with Entertainment on Twitter and Instagram at Wrestling with E for um, news on upcoming interviews, links, East um, dates and everything you need to know about us. Uh, you can follow us individually as well on Twitter. I am at James2993. You can follow Coleco at I am Coleco. Where can they find Scooter? As always, find me on Twitter at Scooter Dust. You can find me and James hosting The Remix on YouTube, a premium audio companion experience for all premium live events. Alternate commentary for fans by the fans. Next time we come to you, I believe is money in the bank when when you hear this. So tune in for that. And of course, revel in all my Twitch antics as I, along with Rico Constantino Jr. and the rest of the Smoking Dragons clan, get into a lot of mischief. Twitch.tv backslash Smoking Dragons. Now, Jack, when I say uh, wrestling wit, you say entertainment. Cool, yeah. For our very special guest, Jack Tomlinson, Coleco Yacht, Scooter Dust, I'm James J, and this has been Wrestling With Entertainment. Hey guys, this is Brutal Bob Evans from Hangs with Bob Seminars and TheWrestleLife.com, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.